coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. I is for It's a Me, Mario. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how you doing? I'm doing great. Can you believe that it is October? Mario Month yes, is properly. finally <laughs> here. Yeah, like last week was a ton of fun, but it was a little bit like when it's Thanksgiving and there's already uh, like holiday decorations or Christmas decorations totally. right. at the drugstore. And then you're like actually in the holiday time, and you're like, this feels right. Today... Mario month feels right. Yes, and we are celebrating Mario all month long. Can I tell you about the like mini existential crisis I had during the cold open? Um, because I'm already putting on like a little bit of a voice to do like the character of the announcer, you know, like that's not how I normally talk. And then I got to the it's a me Mario and I was like <laughs> I was trying to do the mental math of, like, how does that voice do a Mario impression? And then I just didn't do it. <laughs> Well, do you know what? I, uh, I thought it sounded great. Uh, thank you. Mark, speaking of existential crises, we've got a couple of things to bring up <laughs> in, in the vein of existential crises. But the first is uh, the Sonic Forces borrowing program. Uh, as you may be aware, it ran into a snag when on Monday the uh, envelope for the game returned to me, but the cartridge itself was missing. We are currently in a state of crisis, uh, not knowing how to carry... Uh, what was previously a perfect borrowing program forward into the future. We have, however, gotten a few suggestions. Mark, are you ready to hear two suggestions? Yes, please. First from Colton. Colton writes in and says, Sonic Forces Borrowing Program. That's the title. The email reads, Kill it! The game is garbage anyway. Maybe replace it with a Link's Awakening Borrowing Program? Just a thought. And go back to shipping the game in the case, Colton. Uh, good good point, Colton. It is... Uh, <laughs> Here's here's the thing that I worry about with uh, uh, Link's Awakening um, or any game that like someone would actually want to play. Is that the spirit of the Sonic Forces borrowing program? Right. Yeah. Um, it it feels like it's not it's, right. Like yeah. It has to. Be, yeah. Um, and then uh, <laughs> th thank you for the suggestion, uh, Colton. Uh, Jonathan wrote in and said, Hi, Patrick and Mark. Sorry to hear about your copy of Sonic Forces. I think the great thing about the program is that it brings together your listener community. One suggestion I have is for you to do a Twitch stream where you play Sonic Forces. That way the community can participate together and it's a COVID and it's a COVID friendly activity. The biggest downside is that you would have to play Sonic Forces. Um, you could also play some other fun games such as Hades. Thanks for a great podcast, Jonathan. Now, this is interesting. Uh, Mark, you and I are not big uh, streaming guys, um, but that would be a way to uh, sort of emulate the connection to the listeners. Uh, it means uh, more time commitment. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of all, all, over, all over the map on this one. Well, and Jonathan, uh, thank you for writing in. I really, I think you are so right that the thing that's great about the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program other than it being a perfect program, is that it does bring our listeners together. Um, the downside to streaming it is we don't currently have a copy of it. Um, right, 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 right. Well, I think I think also then with the the suggestion of like or more fun games, <laughs> if if we were to start streaming something, right, one hundred percent it would not be Sonic Forces. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the inaugural stream. Um, I think, you know, Patrick, you and I were talking about the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program uh, after the show on Tuesday. And I think, you know, after, uh, you know, we had our own crisis of faith. But I mm -hmm. think where we've landed, at least for the moment, is that the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program uh, is a perfect program. And, yes. you know, we, there have been times in the past where we thought that the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program had ended. And it turned out to not be the case. And so I think our faith is being tested here. And the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program, if it truly is a perfect program, which we believe it to be, 
I think Correct. this will resolve itself with time. So as far as I'm concerned, Sonic Forces Borrowing Program still on. People should still mm. get on the mm. list because I think in some way this will resolve itself. So it, I, I think I think it will be resolved. I think it is uh, perhaps. Um, uh, I think we're perhaps speaking too soon, or uh, perhaps being careless with our language when we say solving itself. I believe it will be solved by you and by me and by our listeners. So uh, if you can uh, help us out, help us figure out how this thing continues, please write into us, Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Um, or write into us and give us your mailing address <laughs> to go on the list for whatever this ends up being. Um, I like all of the ideas that are out there in the ether. We will circle around something at some point. Um, we'll just... Look, we all got to rally together and make this thing work. Um, on both uh, We Got to Rally Together and Existential Crises, I'm going to skip a few notes here and get us right to uh, the election is coming up in just over a month. Um, uh, the day this comes out, it'll be a month and two days. Uh, so make sure that you are registered to vote, that you have a plan to vote, that you know uh, when and where and with whom you're going to do it, and that the other people in your life are also prepared to do it. And then also make sure that you're voting for Joe Biden and that you understand uh, all of the other things that are on your ballot. You're, there's going to be a lot of them. Um, top of the ticket is super important, but everything else uh, affects your state, your town, your county um, in very specific, very immediate ways. So make sure that you are educated on all of that. Mark, anything to add on the voting front? No, I like we talked about last week and like you or earlier this week and like you mentioned, um, it's super important for you to vote, but you can also be an advocate for getting other people who are maybe haven't done it before or are more reluctant to vote to participate in the system as well. Yeah, look, hey, everyone's talking about that crazy debate this week. Uh, it, you know, take that and roll it into a conversation about like, and we can restore some sanity here by voting. Um, so thank you for uh, putting up with us on that. Uh, the other two things that we, no, three things. We've got too many uh, pre-show uh, things here. Um, we'd like you to review us on Apple Podcasts. You know how to do that. Thank you to everyone who's done it. Um, uh, also, your Mario memories. As Mark stated earlier, we are celebrating Mario all month long. Uh, the end of the month, we are doing an episode that's all of our Mario memories. Your Mario memories, please write into us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. Gmail uh, w uh by no later than october 27th and give us give us your sweet sweet mario memories uh, ooh, so we, we can talk them. about them Ooh, they're so tasty um so whatever form those take uh it could be you could write a song you could uh put together a jigsaw puzzle you could uh take a picture of mario in real life uh, and send it to us uh and we will feature it on the show um last thing uh, we are aware that this morning, at 7 o'clock this morning, so probably by the time you are listening to this, um, the next Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC character has been announced. Uh, they're doing a whole you know, video, uh, probably revealing, and the character will be available later. Um, you know, We'll talk about it on Tuesday's episode next week, uh, but just wanted to, you know, we're aware that it's happening. If you weren't aware that it's happening, go and find that video now. I'm sure it's cool. And Sakurai's playing against himself with uh, two pro controllers on opposite hands. It's always a spectacle. Mark, do you have any guesses as to who it's going to be? I think this is really Waluigi's time, right? Uh, I think it's really Birdo's time. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see who gets it. Um, all right, Mark. Uh, we did uh, part one of ABCs of Mario last week. We're going to jump into part two. Let's do it. <laughs> So uh, for those not familiar with this exercise, we take each letter of the alphabet, uh, we assign them one thing from the Mario universe, uh, and we talk about how it makes, uh, how, how that makes up, you know, what is fundamentally uh, Mario. We did A through M last week. We are doing N through Z this week. Um, Mark, you mentioned that uh, the alphabet gets a little bit weirder uh, here in, 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 the, in the back half, uh, and so some of the connections become perhaps a little more tenuous? <laughs> I think that is fair to say. Um, I also, I made up my whole A to Z list last week, uh, and when I opened it now to do, uh, to do this show, I read through the second half, and I, I think I remember all of my <laughs> rationale for, for all of these, but we'll see. We'll see. There's going to be a little bit of, uh, you know, d defending my opinions from a week ago going on here. 
Um, Mark, would you like to begin with N or should I? I think I started last week, so why don't you do the honors? Okay. Um, so for N, I just went with the Nintendo 64, uh, specifically the Nintendo 64, not just Nintendo in general. Um, and it is because I associate Mario and obviously Mario 64 with the Nintendo 64 so tightly. Like Nintendo's always been a, um, you know, at, at console launch, there's like the one exclusive that like really matters for them. Right. And like really sort of shapes the identity of, of the platform. But I feel like in, in no, it's it, every other launch is just uh, crushed by Nintendo 64's in terms of specificity. Because you could only play Mario 64 and Pilot Wing 64. And who wanted to play Pilot Wing 64? It was basic for like a month. It was just a Mario 64 machine. And that controller. The controller is insane for the Nintendo 64, but it made so much sense for Mario 64. Like the the C buttons controlled the camera, and it's all right there. Uh, the the thumbstick, the analog stick, the thing that you'd never used before in your life, uh, makes perfect sense for controlling Mario in a 3D space. Um, it, the Nintendo 64 is Super Mario 64, as far as I'm concerned, um, and uh, so that that just seems like they are a, a perfect little you know symbiote together. Yeah, it really is remarkable that the that Mario 64 was a launch game in the sense that like it was your first first introduction to the Nintendo 64 for so many people and it was the first time Mario was in 3D and you know like it was doing all this other stuff that 3D platforms that platformers had never done before. So the fact that it like worked as well as it did is such a testament to that team. Yeah, it's also interesting that there isn't really that much Mario representation on the Nintendo 64. It's really just that and Paper Mario, right? Are there other, I guess, uh, Mario Kart and Mario Party later on. So I guess there are others. But, uh, you know, it it's not nearly like uh, every other platform where it feels like there are, are multiple entries in Mario series. Yeah, and I mean, it is it is interesting looking back on it that it wasn't until the uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 that we had like two mainline Mario games on a home console, right? You just were kind of like, no, Mario yeah. 64 was it until the GameCube Super Mario Sunshine like was the only Mario platformer that you got. And uh, so, and I guess actually maybe Sunshine was the last time that we have, not Sunshine, sorry, Galaxy 2 is the last time that we have had a direct sequel I can't think of uh, the next. Yeah, unless one. unless you wanna unless you wanna count the like the new Super Mario Brothers games as like their own series, right? Right, but those have all been on different platforms, haven't they? They have all been on different platforms. Yes. What's the point, <laughs> <laughs> Patrick? I wish I could tell you. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great. It's good. Look, the Nintendo sixty four is Mario, is as as far as I'm concerned. My N is ninjas. Okay. All right. So these are like the little uh, ninja looking dudes. They look like stars. Um, so ninjas first showed up in Super Mario Brothers 2. They've kind of had a uh, um, genesis. They've, their like body has changed a little bit. Originally, I think that they, they were actually just like star shaped ninja dudes like star-shaped enemies who were black and they have like white eyes and their like mouths or tongues or whatever are red. And then slowly they have evolved with the rest of the Mario universe. And now they appear to be like pale, possibly albino, at least like beluga white underneath yes. that are wearing these uh, like shrouds. And what used to be their eyes are now like a cutout where their eyes are seen. I. Uh, for whatever reason, I find current ninjas really unsettling because you're like, what do you look like underneath if we remove oh, yeah. your clothes? Asking the question, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I imagine they're slimy, like xenomorphs from uh, the Alien franchise. Wow, bold. I assume that they're just the same thing that a shy guy is under that mask. No, no, because aren't they like star shaped? And so shy guys aren't star shaped. Well, the, I mean, the uh, the the star shapedness to them is just like the points on the top of them, right? 
I mean, they've maybe got longer arms, <laughs> but like the the there are like points that are just sort of like ears. Yeah, it is it is weird to me that they that they've changed as much as they have because back when they were just like a star, like a a, a black star that like ran around and like jumped. Um, I really loved that character design as a kid, um, and I remember trying to go as one for Halloween one year. Um, but obviously, it's an incommunicable idea of like, no, I'm a ninja from Super Mario <laughs> Brothers 2. No, I am not a ninja. <laughs> also, I think you're wrong. I think that they are like Cronenberg-esque body horror wow. where, you know, their like arms and legs have been honed to points. Um, so they are basically stars. I think they're horrifying ninjas, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think uh, also they they have a, a little bit of an interesting role in uh, Super Mario Maker Two, where they are they act as like the ghosts of other players. <laughs> yeah, which is so weird. <laughs> um, like why why are the ninjas doing that? Why not use one of the many ghosts in the Mario universe? It's just a strange choice. It is. It's a strange choice. My O moving on to O is overalls. We're talking Mario's iconic oh. outfit baby uh when i never really paid attention to it but when you're like looking at it he's wearing his overalls great love the overalls he's wearing a long sleeve red shirt and like inherently i knew this was true because mario is not one to show a lot of skin normally in his day-to-day life but you're like that's got to be uncomfortable running around doing all this like crazy gymnastics wearing a long sleeve shirt and overalls like good for him Oh, okay. We're, we're just saying that that's good for you. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I find most unsettling about Super Mario Sunshine, a game that uh, about which I find many things unsettling, is that he is wearing a short sleeve red tee. It is so weird to see this stretch of skin from just above his elbow to his white gloves. I mean, we're really, uh, we're living in a totally different universe now. Um, And I think we've all gotten used to the fact that Mario, you know, like, uh, has nipples and that we saw a lot of Mario skin in Super Mario Odyssey. But I, you know, like, as much as we're accustomed to it now, that was shocking. When Mario Odyssey, like, first came out or they first had those, like, promo shots of him running on the beach, like, uh, it, it makes sense. But at the same (laughs) time, I had never considered it. This is not where I thought you were driving when you were like, we're used to it now. I thought you were going to say uh, that like in the original appearance of Mario, he is wearing red overalls mm, mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. Uh, and, and in, in many early appearances, um, instead of wearing like overalls that are made of denim and therefore are blue. Right. Um, he's wearing uh, red bib overalls, which is a look. Although I guess it's kind of more like uh, wearing a, a jumpsuit, which is something that you could actually see like a plumber wearing right right i guess so yeah maybe that's maybe that's more uh, what it's about who do you think has the best um overalls in the mario universe i feel like they all shop at the same place like i'm trying to think what the differences would be you think there's one store that carries uh overalls that are thin enough for waluigi and uh husky enough for wario you well, think they get that at one store? <laughs> I think if you are a uh, an overall outlet, that you are going mm. to have overalls in all shapes and sizes. I guess that stands to reason. I'm. Do, are Wario's overalls a little bit different? Are they, are they like uh, maybe they're just like a darker denim? I'm looking them up right now. I feel like he he has a darker overall, or uh, not Wario, but Waluigi. Oh, they're not well. I, I think potentially we'll get to Waluigi or Wario oh. a little bit later, but um, uh, yes, lots, especially with Waluigi, uh, lots to dive into there. Like, what is that person's deal? All right, all right. I will withdraw my observation about his overalls um, and instead offer my uh, maybe kind of weak O. Um, I'm saying original uh, because Mario is the sort of forebearer for so many different forms of game and forms of gameplay and sort of set the template for what a like video game company mascot could be. Um, Like, I guess you could say that maybe like Donkey Kong or Pac-Man beat him to the chase, but like, 
you know, there is no icon like Mario. He is the original. Um, he, uh, Super Mario Brothers uh, established what it would be to have, uh, you know, to be like a, a 2D platformer. Super Mario 64 established what it would be like to have a 3D platformer uh, and just on and on. Like you can trace so many things back to Mario um, that he's just he's the origin of of uh, of, of so many trends in gaming. Um, so that's I'm going with original. Absolutely. Yeah. Hard to argue. Um. Yeah, which makes it also not that much fun to talk about. <laughs> for my P, Mark, uh, I have got to go from my main man, my aquatic dinosaur buddy with a cute little ascot that he's wearing. I'm talking about Plessy the Dinosaur from Super Mario 3D World. Um, Mark, not a fun game mechanic in any way. Um, uh, do you remember the Plessy sections of Super Mario 3D World? No. So Plessy is, uh, he's like a Loch Ness monster type. Um, and he's wearing like a, a, a little red scarf. Um, and, uh, he's very friendly. So when you ride him, uh, you, you encounter him, you ride him and it's basically just like through the water. It's like kind of surfboard level esque. Um, and, uh, all, all of the players that are playing, um, control this dinosaur together, which means it is uh, ultimately pretty frustrating, <laughs> uh, unless everyone is like yelling together about which way they go. Um, but one of the most charming, enduring things about Plessy, this big orange dinosaur uh, is that when you get to your goal, he, uh, you know, kind of like tosses you off his back and then he stands up on his hind legs and waves to you while you go off on your adventures. <laughs> that is really adorable. He's very charming. Uh, when Super Mario 3D World comes out on the Nintendo Switch, uh, everyone will have the chance to experience Plessy, be frustrated a little bit with the gameplay segments there, but then uh, be rewarded with the absolute charm of Plessy waving you goodbye. Plessy's a really good one. I feel like with for Mario, P is a really strong letter. You got pipes, you got piranha plants, you got plumber, you got pow yeah. box. But the one I ended up going with is power-ups, uh, an iconic mm. part of the Mario franchise, starting with the uh, fire flower and going all the way to, I was going to say the, the kitty cat, but... Um, like the cat bell, but probably something in Odyssey that I'm not thinking about right now. That well, there uh, should really be super obvious. Power ups in in Odyssey, right? Right. Or that's my memory, like, anyways. Yeah, because you're just like capturing uh, enemies, and like that's sort of the replacement for uh, for the power ups. But yeah, I mean, we did a whole episode ranking uh, all or just determining the best, I guess. Um, uh, power ups in in Mario's arsenal, and there are a lot of good ones. Um, you know, playing through uh, or watching Sarah play through Galaxy right now, um, I'm reminded of all of the uh, just absolutely adorable power ups in there. Of like, you can turn into a bee. Um, you can. Uh, there's, I guess these are the next two are both from uh, Galaxy Two, but there's like the where you turn into the rock. There's another mm -hmm. where you turn into a cloud. Um, like it's just great, uh, adorable, fun stuff. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting how the ones that, like, initially, when they get introduced, you're like, sometimes Nintendo knocks it out of the park immediately, where it's like, yeah, like, the cat bell, instant win. Other times, yeah. you're like, oh, that was, like, an interesting attempt, but not necessarily, it's not going to make it into the pantheon of great power-ups. But then there are the ones that you're, like, at the time, maybe not crazy about, like, when I was first playing Galaxy, I didn't particularly care for the B power-up, but now, looking back... You're a back, monster. I know, well, how do you, I know. How do you live with yourself? No, I, I completely agree now when you're like, oh, like, what? How could I possibly be so on such the wrong side of history when it comes to the B <laughs> outfit? Now I'm demanding more B outfit. Yeah, the B outfit is uh, precious. And it'll, uh, one of the things I really love about uh, Mario power-ups is that they have the ability to, like fundamentally introduce a new game type right um like having the the b costume means you're climbing surfaces it means you're flying um like uh, all of these things just open up huge possibilities uh to make the game into something else entirely moving on to q my q is quality um mm -hmm. <laughs> very good when a when a mario game is coming out like a mainline mario game you know that nintendo is bringing 
their A team. You know that it's like, um, it's. I cannot even imagine like the pressure you must feel creating a new Mario game. Like even the ones that are, uh, you know, maybe the roughest, like Super Mario Sunshine, are still like so incredibly like well thought out and fun, and like the music is amazing. Like it is a Mario game. You just inherently expect that it's going to be amazing yeah they're always artistic achievements and like super modest technological achievements as well like a mario game is almost never going to be like you know jamming it in your face how advanced it is um but you're also i'm gonna say never but like of course you will encounter like glitches or like flipping through the world from time to time or whatever um but like there aren't much more polished games than Mario games. Like, they, they just work. Yeah, like, uh, it's really remarkable to see Galaxy running on the Switch because <laughs> you're like, wow, like, that is a game that, it, you know, is like 15 years old and, like, it hasn't really aged. Like, it was no, incredible then really and it's, like, incredible now. Yep. Um, my cue, I went with question blocks. Um, because this is a persistent thing in, in all of Mario that, like, uh, if you're going to get an item or you're going to encounter a coin or maybe even something that's going to hurt you, it is just a little box floating in the air, very conveniently marked with a question mark so that you know there is something in there, but you don't know what it is. Um, and there's just something, like, so fundamental about that block um, that isn't really replicated in other games similar games like the question block just is uh that that's mario um and you're going to find something when you bash it open and it's nothing that makes sense right this isn't a treasure chest this isn't like a a, a box or like it's just it's just a, a floating cube with a question mark on it that you hit it changes color and something comes out of it one of the things i'm really excited for with um super nintendo world that universal studios is building is you know they the promise of being able of the land being like interactive and they've talked about you know like there being a section where there's like a course that you can run or you can interact with it and like question blocks are part of that and i am whenever i'm able to go to super nintendo world that is something that i'm really excited to do is like yeah to like actually be in a mario environment and be able to interact with those iconic things like question blocks yeah totally also there's just something very pleasing and simple about the design of them just a big yellow uh box with a big white question mark on it like amazing uh all right so for my r look i went back and forth being like should i do something that a little bit more like universal for this no forget it my r is roy the <laughs> best of the koopa kids uh we ranked him as such in our very first ranking episode um He's cool. He's got these like rad shades on. He's got a little bit of an attitude. Uh, he's very cool. I just want him to be my friend. I love Roy. Yeah, for sure. Roy is my boy. Um, we are ride or die when it comes to Mario Kart. Um, mm -hmm. I also really want Roy to be my friend. I don't think he ever will, but that won't stop me from trying. That's right. Also, uh, yeah, I mean, whenever he's a selectable character or like, you get to decide something about the Koopa kids. Just always go Roy. Always go Roy. The rest of them. Look, I don't think we uh, stressed this enough when we ranked them, you know, three years ago or whatever. Uh, but it's Roy at the top. And then the rest of them, like they're in a different category. It's Roy and the rest. The rest of the Koopa kids are like crazy or mean. And Roy doesn't. <laughs> Roy is not either of those. He. Yeah. Uh, look, obviously there's a job to be done and Roy is going to do it, but like, it's not personal. It's just no, business, baby. No. It's just business. And look, business is good. <laughs> My R is royalty. Um, yeah. there are so many different Royals in the Mario universe. And look, we all love talking about the Zelda timeline, but what I personally am constantly you know sending bill trinan dms on twitter about is give us an official like monarchy 
uh, like family tree. Let us figure out what is going on in the Mario universe. Who begat who? Yeah, I mean, I would say right now we have no information that like you can't even assume any familial ties outside of Mario and Luigi are brothers. Everything else is a mystery. Is uh, Princess Peach even the princess of the same kingdom as Daisy? Uh, are they related? Uh, why, do, why do they look so similar? <laughs> yeah, are, 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 are titles like princess... Is that like a Queen mm-hmm. of Naboo type situation where, you know, it's like sure. an elected, she elected position? Right. Like where where are is her family? Is King Koopa like is Bowser an actual king or is that just a title that he has assigned himself? These are questions. What about that, King Boo? Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, like what's up? Was he a king who died and became a boo? I think the answer is no, because boos were not like go were not like other things. I think he is That's a right. boo who is a king, but I don't know for sure. Nobody's telling me. I cannot sleep at night. I'm driving my husband crazy because I'm just like, I'm writing letters. I'm doing everything I can. I need this information. Well, because look, we need to understand the, we need to understand the family so we can understand the lines of succession because there is a high drama just waiting to be told about who next will inherit the kingdom of Mushroom. And we just need to know what's at stake here. Right. Is Mario like a royalist? Like, is he concerned Mm -hmm. that if like Princess Peach disappears, that the monarchy is going to crumble? And he's like, I don't even really care that much about Princess Peach. What I need is there to be a monarchy for whatever reason. Yeah. Mario is a royal watcher. Take it to the bank. That's (laughs) canon. (laughs) He subscribed to Hello Magazine. He knows what he wants. <laughs> Next, uh, for my S, I have Super Show is in the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. We talked Very a little good. bit about it uh, in our previous episode, so I won't dwell too much on it here. But if you are were a kid of a certain age in the late 80s, you probably saw the Super Show. It was filmed for like four months, but they pumped out like almost 100 episodes. The show is wild. It doesn't make any sense. There's live action segments with celebrity guests like Cher and Cindy Lauper. There are animated segments. This was the Wild West of the Mario universe. Like, uh, there was no real control over what was going on. It's wild. It sucks. It's not good. Don't watch it. No, but... it's real bad. <laughs> it's uh, it, the th- the thing that's crazy to me is that there are sort of like two separate arms of it that both seem to have no supervision whatsoever because the animated portions of it weren't just like taking these characters into an animated world. They were totally different versions of Mario and Luigi voiced by different <laughs> yeah. uh, actors and everything. Uh, and they had uh, different adventures with different characters. Um, like the the live action bits, wasn't there like a guy who had like spaghetti all over the front of his face? Oh, that sounds like hanging right. down, yeah, yeah, like some sort of a slash or like bucket head or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, what what an awful show. Um, and what a specific point of my childhood. <laughs> uh, Mark, for my S, I just went with secrets. One of the things that sets the Mario series uh, aside from other like series is that there's always going to be something just off the screen or like a hidden block or some way to jump over a barrier so that you can get to some like warp pipes or something. Um, and that is part of what made those games, especially when I was young and uh, you know playing like the NES in the, uh, uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, um, that like, you know, I would spend some time with like the Mega Man games or like Ninja Gaiden or whatever. Um, and like all of those games are like straightforward. You play through the level and like that, that's kind of it. Uh, and you know, there's, you can do it better or faster or whatever, but like the replayability is sort of just in your, uh, your desire to play those same levels again. But Mario always, always, always offers you, uh, another chance to go through it and find something you didn't find before. There's always more experience for you there and you know um the secrets are so prevalent in early mario games that like i didn't i don't as an adult i have a lot of those games memorized i have a version of those games memorized where i warp here and then go here and warp here so i've got like big blind spots like in parts of those games just because i always warped past them as a kid yeah it's interesting that even like the first mario game had uh warp pipes i i didn't really think about that because um and the second game had like the rocket ships that you could skip 
But really, I feel like for me, the third game is where, and not to overstate it, but where you're like, wow, like exploration is like rewarded, like experimentation is rewarded. And then really mm-hmm. in Super Mario World, when it becomes part of the map where it's like, there are secret exits and that has also yeah. like continued. I completely agree. Like uh, exploration and experimentation are really like rewarded in the best Mario games in a way that very few games franchises um, like value it the same way. Yeah. Um, next uh, for T, I just went with tennis because man, Mario plays him a lot of tennis. Um, the uh, the tennis game on the Virtual Boy, uh, a, a a wonderful Virtual Boy game. Mario's playing tennis. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces. Uh, you know, you just Mario's always on the court for whatever reason. This is one of the sports that they're like, yeah, Mario plays this one, <laughs> and he plays it all the time. It's like the second most popular. Uh, or not most popular, but like the with the second most entries after Mario Kart, as far as these sorts of, uh, you know, put Mario in a different situation and make him do it. Uh, like he'll also play golf, sure, soccer sometimes, baseball sometimes. No, nah, he plays tennis on every system. <laughs> Wait, that's a yeah, I hadn't really thought about that. And I feel like tennis is also the genesis of a lot of, or maybe not a lot, maybe I'm just thinking of Waluigi. Maybe I'm just always thinking of Waluigi. <laughs> you but, are uh, always thinking of Waluigi. <laughs> the genesis of some characters, uh, because you got to have a doubles partner for everybody. Yeah, yeah, great point. Um, my... Also, it, it's, it solidifies a lot of relationships, too. <laughs> That's true. It's That's like true. Yoshi and Birdo, friends or something. They're doubles partners. <laughs> uh, my T, uh, I debated between Toad's as a like whole as a collective but i ended up going with tanuki um is mm, very you know, good uh, uh, as a kid we always just called it the raccoon suit in super mario brothers 3 it wasn't until much later that i even heard what a tanuki was and you know for me as a kid one of the things or I, honestly as an adult one of the things that's always fun for me about nintendo games and about like mario games is seeing the differences in like localizations between uh the u.s and japan or other parts of the world and it introduced me to like a lot of like concepts uh like japanese concepts that i otherwise maybe wouldn't have been exposed to as early or as easily like uh tanuki yeah that there's like a sort of mystical raccoon wise creature that can turn into a statue it's very neat uh and i i i like seeing that very specific slice of like culture and mythology uh sort of representing itself in mario which never feels like Mario never you're never playing Mario and you're like this is Japanese Uh, but like here's one part where you're like oh that's very Japanese uh and I also uh you know as a kid who grew up playing a lot of Super Mario Brothers 3 um the like Tanuki suit Mario is very iconic to me and so or just Tanuki Mario is very iconic to me and I think it is for a lot of people because um you know in the past 10, 15 years or so, you have seen a big resurgence of Tanuki Mario being represented a lot, whether it's in 3D land or other places. Like, I think that is a special Mario. That is a special power up in a lot of people's hearts. Yeah, agreed. Uh, then for you, I have underwater levels for good or for ill are a big yes. part of Mario. I remember one thing uh, as a kid that I always thought was like so cool and interesting and felt like a cheat was the fact that in Super Mario Brothers, the um, like squids that are uh, making their way around in the water level, Bloopers. if you're just walking on the bottom, they they can't hit you, they can't hurt you, and that felt like felt like such like a cool like thing to have discovered. Um, this uh, this might be burning one of my Mario memories for the show at the end of the month, but people are emailing us, so thank you. Keep doing that. I will burn the story here. Um, the very first time that I ever got to uh, the first underwater level in Super Mario Brothers, uh, I was by myself. Um, and, you know, I had played so much of the game, like, with my friend Pete before and uh, with just other people in my life. Um, and so the first time I got to the underwater level, I didn't understand how it worked. So I, you know, got to that first, like, bit of um uh like seaweed or whatever it is that you or like coral i guess Mm -hmm. um that you have to get over and i didn't realize that to swim you had to just like keep jumping like i would push jump and then he would like (laughs) jump a little bit and go back to the ground and i timed out there and died (laughs) because i didn't know how to swim that's uh really cute 
<laughs> Thank you. Why can't Metroid crawl, right? Yeah. Yes, 100% why can't Met- Metroid crawl. Um, but do you have a, a favorite underwater level or like a, a, a notoriously bad one? You know, I really, I don't particularly care for the water levels in general in the 3D Mario games, but I really want, love the one in uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Um, oh, darn. I'm, it's like the one with all like the, basically like champagne, uh, yeah. bottles, yeah, bu- whatever. Bubble Lane, I think is the. Yeah. I really love that one. It, yeah. Um, I really love that world. And then I really, even though I think they're challenging, I really like the underwater levels in Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, that's, that's another one that Ooh, those just are like really like sticks in my mind. Um, I will always have a soft spot for um, a specific underwater moment, which is when you discover the eel inside mm-hmm. the ship in Super Mario 64. That level as a whole is kind of a bummer. Um, and like, you know, all of the levels in Super Mario 64 feel small from a 2020 perspective. That one feels very small from a 2020 perspective. Um, but I love that moment. I love, uh, swimming down, seeing a sunken ship and being like, whoa, cool. And then you're like, I'm going to go inside the ship and then an eel comes out and it's huge. Uh, Mark, for my you, I went with the underground theme, um, that do 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 um, which is just such a specific piece of music that gets used in every Mario game, right? Um, like the even even the like basic da 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 do da da Mario, the athletic theme does not get used in uh, in more modern Mario stuff because there's like you know different riffs on it or like they establish like a different bass sound. Um, but that do 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 just gets so like woven into the musical fabric of super mario brothers that it's in like every game somewhere and like just hearing the different uh arrangements and different ways that they uh, apply that rhythm and just those that like octave hopping um is so cool to just like hear it over and over again yeah and you know like the main theme uh the main ground theme from super mario brothers the that underground theme it's like i don't think you have have to have played that Mario game to be familiar with it. It's like, you know, the um shower scene from Psycho or, you know, like a, where it just or the Twilight Zone theme where it just like exists in the culture yes. that like I guarantee you've heard it. Yeah, and it, it it's also like in addition to being ubiquitous, it's also very evocative of what it's meaning to represent, which is like uh, it, there's like a, it's like a lonely underground cold experience. Um, and that just, it, it, it perfectly represents that. <clears throat> Next for V Mark, let's start getting weird. Uh, I'm, I'm going V for victory. The peace sign looking hand symbol that Mario used to flash up, uh, when he beat a level or was just like hanging out sometimes like on the, uh, cover art for, um, Super Mario Brothers, the lost levels, just Mario standing there flashing up what appears to be a peace sign, but he's really doing like a V for victory, um, which is a hand symbol that has been phased out of Mario's usage. Um, he's using it a lot in Super Mario Brothers 64 which I guess is a game I'm just going to talk about all episode. (laughs) Um, uh, But uh, since uh, since the end of the 90s is uh, something that they've been phasing out of Mario's lexicon um, because they always meant it to be as like Mario's... uh, They meant it always to be V for victory, but holding two fingers up uh, in a V shape uh, looks like Mario is giving you the peace sign, right? Uh, And so whether Nintendo intended or not, to be giving a like somewhat like super light political message <laughs> of like peace and like groovy uh, and all that. They're like, okay, right, Mario's got to stop doing that. So he doesn't do it anymore. Like he'll just sort of like pump his fist in the air, which like no one tell Mario that's black power. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, I, I just uh, wanted to uh, draw a little attention to a, uh, a, a long lost gesture of Mario flashing, uh, flashing a V with his fingers. Oh, Mario, get a haircut, you hippie. <laughs> uh, my V is vegetables, which... So uh, this was another one where like, I associate vegetables very strongly with the Mario universe because of Super Mario Bros. 2. But then you go looking at it, and it's like, outside of Super Mario Bros. 2, vegetables yeah, are, are not they? really used that much. Like, I, like 
Princess Peach and Princess Daisy use it as like this their down special in Super mm-hmm. Mario or uh Super Smash Brothers. Like Smash. they pull out like a turnip. But uh it's just one of those I think the fact that it only shows up in Super Mario Brothers 2 mainly, but it is still so associated with these characters is just is a testament to how like the uh iconography of Mario is so strong and persistent. I would you know what? I want to see more vegetables with faces on them in future Mario games, right? Like give me that big turn up with a smiley face on it. I feel like we've lost a lot of smiley faces. Um uh, maybe again because they were ripping out all that hippie iconography, but uh you know like <laughs> the clouds used to have smiley faces, lots of yeah. things. Yeah. Um also, in my re- when I was looking at this for vegetables, I learned that Wart, the villain of Super Mario Brothers 2, hates vegetables, which presumably... That's why they kill him. Yeah, presumably. Yeah. Do you think they're killing him, or do you think it's like he eats... You force him to eat six of them, and then he's like a kid who doesn't want to eat something and is like, blah, this is making me die. Oh, and he's just like throwing no, a big fit. I think... I think he knows his body, and he he claims to not like vegetables, but it's because he knows that they will kill he, him. If his he, phys- he physically, like his physiology, rejects yes. vegetables. Look, we are body positive at Nintendo Cartridge Society, so you know we 100%. think wart is beautiful. Um, so whatever works for wart, clearly vegetables is not it. Also, did you know that the world that you're li- that you exist in in Super Mario Brothers Two is called Subcon, like subconscious. Like subconscious. Uh, wait, is that true for all of the time, or just when you throw down like the potion and go through the door? I think it's all of the time. I think it's the dream all world the time? that you exist in. Wow. I mean, I know it's a dream, but so yeah, sure. Why not call the whole thing subcon? Is Wart the king of subcon? Oh my How gosh! Did he get Another. That title? Oh, Bill Trinan is not going to like my DM tonight. I can tell you that. Uh, moving on to W. Uh, I want to talk about Waluigi for a little bit. And let's do it. Let's dig in. Waluigi's been on my mind a few weeks ago. Um, the Twitter feed Super Mario Broth, we t- retweeted a high resolution image of Waluigi and pointed out that on Waluigi's hat, there's a corner of the up of uh like the L or the upside down L that yeah. is like coming off that is like peeling off of his hat pointing out that it's like a sticker or an applique that has been put onto a hat versus wario mario and luigi where their letter is like sewn is stitched into their hat it's embroidered into it yeah and then you brought up that while luigi has a darker denim to his overalls than the others do basically we don't know about a lot about while luigi he's a little bit mysterious but I get the sense that Nintendo has a strong idea of Waluigi, that they have a very deep understanding of him, and they're just refusing yes. to share it with us. Well, and I, I like also that it means that there is, that I, I, ac- I accept the premise, there is a deep uh, backstory to Waluigi. I think it is also a mystery to the rest of the characters. I feel like this is a... Uh, Dick Whitman, uh, you know, situation where like someone that they thought was uh, Waluigi disappeared uh, decades ago, and now he's back, but he's uh, different than you remember. Yeah, absolutely. Like he uh, is not invited to any party, but he keeps like showing mm-hmm. up. But then you know you gone you go to his like condo and you go into his house and you're like, none of this. This doesn't seem. This is way too vanilla for somebody who's like Waluigi. Like, what actually is going on here? Yeah. I also want to know why why his hat, why that L? Because, I mean, it, it, it is interesting that it's a sticker, right? That's, that's like point of interest number one. But something that we never really drilled down on is why is it an upside down L? <laughs> like, <laughs> Wario's right, no, it, is a W. Yeah. It's not an upside down M. It's a W. No, this is a great point. And I think it's just another piece of the story of Waluigi that doesn't add up. Yeah. Yeah. We've got questions. Bill Trinan, <laughs> check your DMs, buddy. We've got questions. I, I, do you think that the same store that sells all of these overalls also sell embroidered hats? Where are the hats coming from? 
Mm. I mean, I think so because the hats are uh, the hats match the I guess the shirts that go come with the overalls. Yeah, so maybe so maybe, the the, hats, maybe those are different stores. Yeah, maybe the hat and it's actually probably better that they're not all one store because then we're talking maybe about some sort of like you know uh, authoritarian dystopia where there is a single shop in all right. of uh, the Mushroom Kingdom that sells like any clothes that you are allowed to wear. Mushroom Kingdom Clothing Incorporated. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's just one outlet where you had to buy everything, uh, including your boots, your work boots. Um, okay, so for my W, uh, I went, and maybe this is a little bit too close to secrets, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm talking warp zones here, baby. Um, the just the magic of uh, getting to that space where you can see different pipes, and it says like world two world three world four and suddenly uh you have within the world of the game unlocked a cheat code where you can level skip um it's just such an impossibly cool idea and i love seeing it uh i'm personified isn't right but like locationified um in super mario brothers 3 uh when you go to that what is labeled as world nine um, which is just this island of warp pipes, uh, and you can just choose what world you're going to. I just love that. I love the concept of warping so much and of just like having different paths through a game is so cool and so much fun. Yeah, and the variety, especially in those first three Mario games of like the different ways to warp, where, yeah, one is the pipes, one is these rocket ships, one is the um, like these warp whistles. That is something that I feel like the later Mario games, uh, just because they're so much less linear, you don't really have that like warp pipe so much yeah. anymore. Well, it's interesting because like not even in uh, like the new Super Mario Brothers games, which is sort of return to that idea of um, you know a a uh, like world map sort of thing. Um, still, like they'll give you shortcuts or like you know alternate paths to worlds, yeah. but there's no like hub world that you're warping to warp zones uh need to come back also am i i keep saying that in super mario brothers 2 the spaceships are the warps but i actually now that i i don't yeah, think that's they're correct not. they're not yeah no you just you just throw the uh you throw the potion down and go through a door and then go into a uh, specific what are those things the like uh urns or? yeah yeah i don't know <laughs> what are they i don't know exactly what they are i am i uh, you were you Vases, were gonna maybe yeah you weren't gonna stop me though you're gonna let me go the entire episode you're gonna let me be humiliated in a debug that's right and I respect I you for it that's a very Roy <laughs> move that's a real Roy move yeah you just want me to be your friend um so for my ex uh look exes get hard right uh, X is a tough one uh so I am using X in one of its more uh modern colloquial senses to imply the crossover. Mario cross something. Um, so look, Mario plus rabbits, and I understand it's a plus and not a cross, but whatever. Um, Kingdom Battle. Uh, what a perfect like application of two licenses that don't make any sense together. Uh, just doing something together and having a, a super fun time being a great game. Mario as a brand is strong enough and versatile enough that you can cross it over with pretty much anything, and uh, the end result will be a great fun product yeah uh crossover was also my ex uh another one another example is like those mario and sonic the olympic games games totally. where you know when the first one came out on the wii uh everybody was like okay like cool this is a little bit weird but it's fun to see mario and sonic in the same game but that is a franchise that has persisted franchise other franchises have lived and died in the amount of time that mario and sonic at the olympic games has continued to persist Totally. And, and I mean, also, you can just look at um, like the name of Super Smash Brothers obviously comes from Super Mario Brothers. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, there are characters from like all of these other games, but like Mario and like the extended Mario universe is like the core DNA of that. And everything else is built out around that. Mario is the hub of the ultimate video game crossover. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to move right on to why. And my why, of course, is Yoshi, everybody's favorite dinosaur. I like all forms of Yoshi. I like Yoshi from Super Mario World, where he was more like a pack animal that you like rode on him. I like new Yoshi, where he's he stands more upright. He's kind of more his own 
uh, individual. I like weird Beta Yoshi that we found out about a few months ago where he was like a weird raptor like looking thing. Oh, you're saying like an early version of Yoshi, yeah, and not like a submissive Yoshi. Okay, got it. <laughs> um, uh, why? Why for me is also Yoshi. So uh, we can stay on this Yoshi train for a little while. Um, but yeah, I, I mean Yoshi. It's interesting to think of uh, like there are like parts of Yoshi lore that kind of like went away and then have only come back recently. Like the the small Yoshis, like the the baby Yoshis that are like these vacuum machines that just like hoover up all the food in front of them. Um, uh, like th- it's like that in uh, super Mario world. And then not again until I think new super Mario brothers, you um, where they come back and are like some of them uh, uh, glow and some of them like turn into balloons and stuff. Um, yeah. I, I just, I, I, I love that bit about Yoshi and I love that Yoshi is such a, elastic concept that they can do stuff like that where they're like oh, i don't know yoshi breathes fire in this one or uh yeah this yoshi flies i don't know who cares yeah like yoshi i i guess like yoshi is in that same class of character like toad and like even like pikachu right where there are many yoshis there are yes. many toads there are many pikachus but also there is the one yoshi in everybody's mind and whenever you are like writing a Yoshi, at least for me, it is the Yoshi. Like it is Yoshi. And the fact that those two concepts, the human mind is a brilliant thing. The fact that those two concepts can coexist and it doesn't make me go crazy is just like a testament to the genius that is Yoshi. Yeah, 100%. And also, man, what a, it, uh, it just gets me uh, like a little bit worked up that uh, Super <laughs> Mario Galaxy 2 is not in the Super Mario uh, 3D All Stars collection. Because that's when they introduce Yoshi to Galaxy. Uh, and it's so good and so fun. And he plays so great. One of the things I always like about Yoshi is that they make it fun to ride around on him. Mm-hmm. In every single game. It feels good. It feels right. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, you compare that to the Animal Buddies in, um, like, the Donkey Kong Country series. Yeah. And, like, Rambi's not particularly fun to ride. Like, they, no. those uh, animals, the Animal Buddies have their, like, own specific... Uh, fun but it is so different from like yoshi which uh, not yoshi also opens up a lot of areas like you were talking about secrets and stuff like that like you can use yoshi to do to yep. uh, enhance the platforming because you can like uh let him fall to his death while you are making like a super high jump like those are the sacrifices or, yeah or you can flutter kick or you can use his tongue right. to get something or his his boots are tougher than Mario's boots. Also, he's a dinosaur who wears boots. I don't know why we need to defend it any further than that. <laughs> well, you don't want to uh, hurt Mark, his feetsies. <laughs> Mark, are you ready for my Z, my final yes, entry Yes, please. Um, this is just zones. I'm referring to the zones or like the worlds, uh, but they are called zones. In Super Mario Land 2, six gold coins, um, a game which is divided up into six separate zones that are all accessed from a world map. Um, uh, there's the uh, the space zone, the macro zone, the turtle zone, the pumpkin zone, the Mario zone, which is like a giant robotic version of Mario on Mario's own island, uh, and the tree zone. Um, it's just such a weird little... Look, all of the handheld Mario games are weird for one reason or another. Um, this one is particularly weird, introduces us to Wario, um, but also to Mario's own private island where he has like a castle, a mansion, something, uh, and it's just surrounded by these zones. Mark, what's up with these zones? Why are they zones? <laughs> I, you know, I, I um, am glad you're calling out zones, and I'm going to like, el- because I, I want to elaborate it like to the Mario series as a whole, and just like the different worlds that you encounter, yeah. like every game has its own, I mean, not even really theme, but it's just like the variety of uh, areas that you go to in a Mario game and the ability to, for them to keep like surprising us with new ones is definitely one of the joys of the Super Mario series. Yeah, and one of the things that does, I, I think from time to time, uh, like kind of trend towards uh, monotony or like repetitiveness, that like, Oh, here's the desert again. Here's sure. the, you know, fire level, whatever. But uh, specifically the zones in Super uh, Super Mario Land 2, um, that's where it gets weird. Again, 
There's a zone that's just a giant mechanical Mario. There's one that's like a, a giant house or maybe a regular size house and you're shrunk down to be small. There's one that's like a Halloween area. You go into space. I mean, like, it's just it's just bizarre. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think w- there have been so many Mario games that, uh, for me, like, in Super Mario Odyssey, the areas I enjoyed the most, like, the kingdoms I enjoyed the most were the ones that were, like, surprising, where you were, like, yeah. like we had never seen before. And there are so many years of Mario games, 35 years, in fact, that that's like really hard to do. And so I admire when they're able to find new ways to continue to like surprise us. Yeah, that Bowser Kingdom, total surprise. Tons yeah. of fun. Um, so my Z is just zealous. Uh we obviously feel very strongly about Mario. Um, we are from a generation where Mario was a big deal. One of the commercials for Super Mario Brothers 3, um, you may have seen this. it on YouTube, is just like kids gathering together in a field chanting mario and then the camera continues to like pull away until it is uh in outer space and enough people have come together in the world to form the face of mario and that is practically the entire commercial there's like that's all you need to know mario is here he is um like an a tier character that brings me so much joy i'm really excited to be doing mario month uh in october so we can just talk about him all month yeah, me too. I mean, there there are a few things uh, in in the world that bring me as much joy as uh, Mario, and like I I don't know, I will never really be able to put my finger on exactly why I like Mario so much, um, other than uh, it brought me joy when I was a child, and it continues to bring me joy now. Um, he loves to move, to run, to jump. Uh, you never get the sense that Mario isn't having fun, even when like. Uh, you know, he gets hurt and is like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You're like, he's still having fun doing this. Um, and there's something very, uh, like, just encouraging and exciting about the way Nintendo will strip away everything else from Mario except the fun and then build back around that um, so that every new Mario game is just always based around this foundation of what is it fun to do? What kind of place is it fun to run and jump around? Um, Mario's always going to give that to you. I think this was a great start to Mario month. Uh, I think so too. All right, Mark, let's close this out. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Mark, what are we doing next week for for Mario month? We are... I have forgotten already. (laughs) Oh, I think we're ranking... I think we're going to rank the worlds in Super Mario 64. So be prepared for me to talk more about that game uh, next week. Um, If you like this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Uh, You can share it on any platforms you share stuff. We would appreciate that. It helps us out a lot. Um, You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, I am at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell. And the show is at Nin Cart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying, but wait, if Bowser Jr. is Princess Peach's son, then does that mean... How how does this work, Bill? Thanks for listening. I'm Kate Thompson. And I'm Mark David Christensen. And together we host, ah, oh, crap, a Hellboy podcast. The show dedicated to the half-demon hero brought forth by writer-artist Mike Mignola and published by Dark Horse Comics. Each week we discuss everything Hellboy. Plus his expanded universe with the BPRD, Abe Sapien, Lobster Johnson, and many more. That's ah, oh, crap, a Hellboy podcast on Campfire Media or wherever you get your podcasts. Campfire.